If you love anemones, grab yourself a drink, sit down, continue watching this video, since in today's video we'll be talking everything about anemones. First of all, let me start with this sentence right at the bat. Anemones are extremely easy to keep, all right? When I do compare this tank with my mixed reef tank, mixed reef tank has just so many other things that I have to keep an eye on. Well, this tank here behind me, it just, it's just a breeze. It's a very easy tank to take care of. And I need you guys to take a completely different approach of reefing if you guys are planning to have an enemy tank like this. Since mixed reef tank and SPS tank is totally different ball game than this is. All I'm keeping an eye on this tank is salinity and temperature. Make sure that those two are on point and if you're doing regular water changes, if you're actually using a salt that's meant for reef tank, if you're doing those water changes often, you should replenish all the elements that anemones need. Don't think about alkalinity, don't think about nitrates, phosphates. I have noticed that uh, nitrates and phosphates go a little bit higher in this tank, but I do not really test them as often, so I have no idea where they're at right now. But I'll say as long as you keep your nitrates and phosphates in levels where you won't get dinos, you'll be perfect and I wouldn't worry about those levels at all. As a matter of fact, when I started this tank, I was dosing all for reef in one point and then at one point I was dosing cockwasser and I stopped dosing both of them since I honestly haven't seen any difference. And right now, as I said, I'm not dosing anything. I'm just doing my monthly water changes, salinity and temperature are good and that's it. Let's talk about feeding anemones. For years now, I've been using a seafood mix from Aldi. It's just been easy for me to get just one package with lots of different types of seafood. I'll just let it all out, I'll cut it up and just feed them. And I usually will feed them around once every two weeks. Sometimes I'll forget, sometimes I'll feed them more. So let's say if you feed them once every two weeks or once a week, you guys should be good to go. I never seen an enemy that actually perishes from not eating. Sometimes I'll end up not feeding my nems for a month or two. And honestly, haven't seen any difference that an enemy is dying because it doesn't have any food so it's not really a big deal as I said you can feed your nems once a week no problem I'll usually stay away from bigger chunks like silver sides and stuff like that if you have a small enemy you can feed them the mustard shrimp or any smaller food like that and you end up feeding little bigger chunks of food and your enemy starts spitting it out just in the future you're gonna have to cut that food in smaller pieces so your enemy doesn't spit it out and ends up eating it actually as far as lighting goes I wouldn't overthink it as long as you have reef type of lighting. But if you're talking about Colorados and Chicago's, those two love lots of lighting. Again, I don't have lots of experience with other NEMs, so just keep that in mind. But in my experience, my Colorado's and Chicago's, not just mine, but some of my friends have as well, and you give them lots of lighting, like 300 par or above, you'll manage to pull all that yellow colors off of them and they just gonna look gorgeous. And as far as flow goes, they'll appreciate like medium amount of flow. You're gonna shoot for the flow that, for instance, torches like, hammers like, frog spawns like. They like that kind of medium amount of flow. They don't like high flow like Arpora does. For instance, in this tank, this is 40 gallon tank and I do have MP10 running on around 80% or so, just so you have an idea how much flow they like. And you can kind of see my enemies right here here i'm probably gonna post a bunch of videos of them as well just to have a broad idea of how much flow you should give to your nems all right let me do a quick recap of anemone care so basically what you want to keep an eye on is salinity temperature anemone is like highlighting medium flow and just keep up with those water changes and your nems will do great now there's a few things i wanted to talk about as well since especially if you don't have an enemy if you never own an enemy i had quite a different type of enemies over the years and i end up just having colorados in this tank and i have some of the chicago's in my mixed reef tank so i just wanted to talk about a few things that actually i don't suggest for you guys to do but i'm gonna try to approach all of these things that are kind of controversial with my experience just so you guys know what i experienced and from that you guys can come to a conclusion what you guys are gonna do or not so let's talk about mixing enemies i tried mixing them and i failed big time Yes, some on enemies you can mix and some NAMs actually are better with mixing than others. 
I try mixing some of the rainbows and usually rainbow names did way better with mixing than some of the sunburst type did like Chicago's, Colorado's and even Black Widow's are not so good with mixing. And when I do mention rainbows, basically I'm talking about all anemones that are not Colorado, Chicago, Black Widow's, I'm talking about all the other types of names. And it seems that some folks are actually more lucky in mixing names than others. For instance, I was very unlucky in mixing them. And uh, in most of the cases, those folks either have big tanks or even have a small tank connected to a bigger system. So they have more water volume to go around and they end up being more successful in mixing those types of names. But usually all those names are rainbow type of names. Or I've seen some folks that have big UV sterilizers and UV seems to help as well if you decide to mix on enemies. When I started this hobby, folks told me just run extra carbon, that's gonna help. I tried running lots of carbon when I was mixing my NEMS and to be quite honest, it didn't help at all. It seems that the carbon will more deal with all the odor that's coming out of the tank and will help with uh, water clarity. But UV is going to help with all that bacteria battle that NEMS are constantly having between one another in the water column. When I started mixing NEMS, in my mind was like, because I had experience with other coals, and my mind was like, as long as I don't let them touch, as long as I run carbon, there's no way nothing's gonna happen. But I was so wrong. And remember this, if you're mixing NEMS right now, they're not really acting like other corals. Like for instance, other corals, when they sway, when they touch one another, the other one will bleach and will just die right away. Anemones are actually taking their time and you might be successful with mixing NEMS for some period of time and then one in a sudden, they're just all gonna perish or one top will perish. There's three things that's gonna happen if you do mix NEMS. First thing is that the worst thing's gonna happen, that some of the NEMS will perish or all NEMS are going to perish. Second thing, what's going to happen, that your NEMS just won't look as good as they would if they're by themselves in the tank. And third thing, what's gonna happen as it happens with some of the corals as well, some of the uglier NEMS are just gonna take over the tank and all the prettier ones that you have, you're just gonna have less of those. At least that's my experience and what I've seen. And I know that this topic is very controversial. If you guys have any experience with mixing enemies, you guys have been successful long term, one year or longer, make sure to drop in the comments. I want to know how your system is functioning, what you have for registration, what you have going on, how big is your system, do you run UV, do you run carbon, which carbon you run. Since in this hobby, plenty of hobbyists are more experimenting with things and I'm sure even though you heard me don't make stamps, you're gonna still try to do it and try to do it in your way. But so far I've seen that UV helped, bigger system helped, and of course some NEMs do better with mixing than others. If you're currently mixing NEMs and this is your first time actually hearing that you shouldn't mix NEMs, go ahead and Google and even find on YouTube Cypro or Cypro treatment for anemones. And in this video, I won't really talk about it since I just told you don't mix NEMs. If you're not mixing NEMs, this is not something you need to know about. This is just for folks that have to uh, medicate their anemones that were mixed in the past. For instance, in this tank, all these NEMs, I never had them under Cypro treatment at all because I'm not mixing them. And one other thing, I've seen that some anemones will not do well with some of the bigger leather corals. So keep that in mind as well. If you have some of the bigger toadstools and stuff like that, and if your anemones are not looking so good, maybe pick one that you like and keep it in your tank. In this tank, I do have some mushrooms as well. On my other tank, I do have lots of anthids, and my anemones never had really issues with those. But actually, in both of my tanks, I do have UV sterilizers. That might be the reason why they're doing so good. If you never had an enemy and you're planning to set up your first reef tank, actually an enemies are perfect for your first reef tank, but keep in mind that if you're planning to start a new tank with dry sand, dry rock, you're gonna have to wait a pretty long time until you manage to add an enemy. And again, I'm gonna try to tell you what my experience was with adding an enemy early into the tank. I started this tank with live sand, dry rock and Dr. Tim's bacteria. In the first three months, I had lights off completely. I was feeding this tank just with some flakes and some other food I had on hand, just so I can get that bacteria going. And in three March mark, I turned on the lights, I added the NEM and that NEM didn't make it. And I waited one more month and I added two Colorados and all these Colorados that you guys see behind me, they all came for those two that I added in four months mark. 
So if you guys have been in a hobby for some time, and if you do start your tank with live rock, live sand, some of the older biomedia from some older tank, you can probably add that NEM a little bit earlier than I did, and you might have success in that three months mark. But if you're new in the hobby, if you start your tank with dry sand, dry rock, you're gonna have to wait a little longer for that tank to settle so you can add your anemone, and so your anemone can survive in that tank and thrive afterwards. And one other thing you guys have to keep an eye on since anemones are constantly moving and actually what I find is that most of the time anemones are moving in the evening. Basically 99% of the time my anemones in this tank will move in the evening and during the day they'll just stay on that spot where they moved. When I started this tank, when my anemones found a spot that they like, usually they'll stay in that spot and then it won't move for quite some time. When they'll move is when an enemy will split or in my case, since I have a lot of anemones in a smaller tank, I have lots of small anemones that are basically covered with big anemones and they'll move away from that spot because just they're not getting enough lighting. So in my tank, I have an enemies walking almost every other week or so. And if I don't have an enemy guards, I'll be in big trouble. Again, when you're setting up the tank, when your enemies settle, if you have a big tank and your enemies are far away from that power head, you might be fine in the beginning, but know this, that an enemies, again, are walking in the evening, you won't be able to see them when they start walking, and if they end up in that power head, your whole tank can crash, and all your fish can die, just cause you haven't installed an enemy guard in your power head. In this tank, I do have two overflows as well, so I don't need to worry about if an enemy is gonna clog an overflow. This tank is a water box, only one 40 gallon, and uh, they actually have pretty small openings for that overflow. And I don't even know how many NEMs I found going through that overflow without any issues. So if you have one overflow, keep an eye on that overflow. There's lots of folks out there that are selling overflow guards for NEMs and powerhead guards. So make sure to install both of those. If you don't want to end up with crashing your tank if an enemy ends up in the powerhead or if an enemy clogs that overflow, what's gonna happen is that your return pump is gonna keep going and the water won't go in their overflow. Your tank's gonna start overflowing and we don't wanna do that. One other thing I haven't talked about is dinos. And in this tank I had dinos and I know for sure if I haven't uh, reacted quick and installed UV, all of my names will be gone. So if you do get dinos, try to grab that UV, install that UV, sooner the better. And one other thing that I forgot is don't tinker with your lighting. And enemies are very sensitive on that light change. And especially if you have LEDs and if you start tinkering with those LEDs, that's not something that the enemies like. And as far as all that lighting change, I always put the enemies together with Acroporas cause they're as sensitive on lighting change as Acroporas are. So keep that in mind, set up those lights good right off the bat and leave them alone, don't tinker with them and uh, you should be good. If you guys made it so far, feel free to like the video, subscribe. If you guys missed my last video where I talked about two different types of Cheeto algae, feel free to check that video out. We'll do that out of the way. See you guys next video. Peace.